Hello, this is Pete. I've just started a new live video, and uh, as you can tell, because I'm here, and uh, today we have Ben Hillier, um, who is going to join us uh, in a minute, hopefully when he finds out it's happening, uh, any moment. Oh, he's joined, so here we go. We're gonna say hello to Ben. One moment, click on there, click on there. Go, got my tea. He's here apparently. Wait, we're waiting for him. Who comes? Who he is? Ah, hello, mate. Hello. Oh, how are you? Done. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. You got tea as well. Same here. Yeah. We got the same cup. Have we got the same cup. Oh, well, I hope so. Oh, both got grey cups. Much nicer than me. What's up? Some go live. Yeah, there you go. Oh, hello. What have I done? Uh... Oh, it's gone. It's a. Oh, I, press the I can wrong hear button. you, but I can't see you. Press the weird button, haven't you? Yeah, it says something on okay. my screen. Hold on. <laughs> Bit of technical... Uh... Yeah, he's gone. So while... until then, I'm going to look... I've just realised that you can... Oh, no, not this. Oh, yeah, I can connect with him again. Oh, here we go. Let's connect with him again. Everyone's waving. Hello, everyone. Baritone Joe. Hello, Baritone Joe. Do you play the baritone? Good on you. All right. Hello, Francie. He's a... Can't see easy, easy. Okay. Els, Roswells, hello. Hello, everyone. We're waiting for Ben Hillier. We're not quite sure what he's, what we're waiting for exactly. Uh, so we're just going to see. Hopefully, he'll be with us in a minute. And I'm just going to just talk. I'm just going to say anything that comes into my head until, until he shows up. I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, yeah, I've got a thing here. What's this? Hold on a minute. I have to do this. Go live with Ben Hillier. Add. Right, we're waiting for him. Um, so he'll play for Nubian Twist. Ah, right, Wicked. Nice one. I think I've seen you guys, actually. I've seen you guys. Did you play with us in um, Glasgow? Nubian Twist. I seem to remember. Did I meet you in Glasgow? I don't know. Maybe you could ask about While we're waiting, um, I might as well tell you about Ben Hillier. Ben Hillier um, is a producer and drummer and songwriter. Um, and he um, produced um, a lot of the Nadine Shah, well, all the Nadine Shah albums, um, and has also kind of written quite a lot of uh, material. He, he produces the tracks and, and builds them himself. Um, he's done production work for lots of, uh, lots of people over the years. He produced a fair bit of um, our album, um, and we recorded it along with Dan Crook, if I can see us here. Hello, Dan. Uh, he was engineering the sessions in Ben's um, studio. Ben has an amazing studio. I don't know if I can touch this button. See if he's moving the mic. Right, let's see if we go live. Uh, he's pressed some button on his phone, which means that he can't do anything now. We did have a we did have a little um, practice run this afternoon. Um, oh, there he is. Back in the room. I, I can stop. I can stop filling frantically now. <laughs> I've just been feeling yeah, frantically no, telling no, everyone no. about your about about you. Um, <laughs> it was playing me up other, to. playing me all the other videos and said I don't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> They're very good. Well, I was just giving you a little intro and telling everyone what you've been what you've been doing over the years and that you've been been um, working with Nadine Shah a lot over the last few years uh -huh. and um, and I think a, a lot of people will know you as a obviously as a producer and mm -hmm. anyone who's seen Nadine will. Will know you as the drummer as well, but I think a lot of people, and I, including me included, didn't realise that you play a lot of things like guitar and bass. And you're playing a lot of the instruments on those albums as well, aren't you? Yeah, I, I'll, yeah, I, I don't mind. I, I like playing all those instruments, but I, I don't think I play them in front of anybody else. I, this is very strictly uh, my own uh, for recordings in in the studio and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's some of those Nadine tracks that have got you on guitar though. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I play guitar on quite a lot of them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't actually stand up and play, so I couldn't play live. But... Are, are you self-taught guitarist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just picked it up, really. Yeah. Right. Because so, um... I've tried to many times to play the guitar and it failed miserably. I just can't. I can play most things. I just can't play guitar. At it was all. just, yeah, it's just out of necessity, really. Um, yeah. 
just wanting to get ideas down for specifically for Nadine's stuff, really. That's what drove me into it. Yeah. Um, um, and rather than I was, it's always frustrating if you have not that there's I don't know many wonderful guitarists, um, um, but I mean Dan's an amazing guitarist and he's usually here. But it's just that sort of that. Uh, it's just frustrating having to go through the interface of another person when I can actually just bang just pick it up and smash it out yes. itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to go for the playing one note with a large amount of confidence, or one string with a large amount of confidence and lots of effects. Yes, yeah. that seems yeah. to work for me. Yeah. Well, that's Much what Miles Davis says, isn't it? Miles Davis says that it's all about a ninety percent attitude. Totally, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's true. Yeah, I've had some. I've have recorded some very, very technically able musicians. It was absolutely awful. <laughs> 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 completely the wrong attitude. <laughs> zero, zero vibe. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. I'm <laughs> saying it's Jeff oh. Goldblum. <laughs> I, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Do you? I don't, I don't mind that. I'll, I'll take my shirt off later. And um, is it because is it because of the glasses? Do you think? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, I find yeah. that when you wear when you have something that's like. I had a moustache for a while, and every time you'd wear a moustache, it was like, oh, you look like this person, not that person. I've got like a, quite a long scarf and a hat. Whenever I wear them, it was like, oh, you look like Doctor Who. It's yeah, just like yeah. there's certain, certain archetypes that you can't, you just can't escape. Yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's never a... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, wanted to talk you, I wanted to talk to you about um, the writing process that you, how you and Nadine have um, come up with the, the tracks. I spoke to Nadine on Monday. And talk yeah. to her about about it, and she was sort of telling me about her lyrical approach, where she, where she will um, uh, hear something, overhear something in conversation, and get a little mm -hmm. kind of phrase from that, and use that as a building block, and building a build a song from there. And she yeah. said, uh, she said, you know, she she, she kind of struggles because she, she hasn't. She was sort of saying that she she can't just kind of do loads of different projects because she wasn't really playing instruments, but I'm sure she plays guitar and piano, so. What I was yeah. going to ask was, yeah, hmm. yeah, exactly. So I was going to ask you, like, how does a track often, on average, how does a track normally start? With, with, with I, I guess, that, I guess we have two, we have two starting points really. There's either Nadine will send me a, um, a, a really simple demo of a vocal, yeah, her vocal, or the, or the beginnings of her vocal and a, and a simple yeah. guitar part. Or a simple. Yeah. It's usually guitar these days. Sometimes it's sometimes it's piano, but it's usually guitar. Um, mm. And then I will take the. I'll usually take the the music out and and rewrite. You know, based on what she's done. But then I'll rewrite the music for yeah. For, and quite often change the speed. Sometimes even change the meter of it. And so right. Yeah. Okay. Turn it from a so three. So the basic, just the tonal sensor. You'll keep the sort of tonal sensor, but you kind of change. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's more. I'll keep her her melody. You know, I won't necessarily. Yeah. Melody, but the, but um, everything else is up for grabs. Um, yeah. And I'll. So it's orchestration, basically. Yeah, and I'll. And, you know, sometimes it'll be like a, something she's written in three four, and I'll write it. I'll change it to a four because I want yeah. I, I want a different groove on it or something like that. Um, and then the other the other way we start is um, I will I write quite a few instrumental pieces and send them to her, and then ah. she, and she will and so and sometimes they're almost complete, um, and she'll write over the top of those and and um, and the actual the instrumental music won't necessarily change so much. Other times I'll. I'll send her something and she'll write over the top of it and one section of it might be great. Um, yeah. You know, and I'll, and I'll base all the music around the bit that she's, that fits what she yeah. is vocally. Um, so it's a, so it's those two different ways. You know, either she'll, it's basically either she'll start it or I'll start it. And we both. Yeah. 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 Do that. So, um, cause I, I do that with Kush where I'll, hmm. I'll make a kind of a track, get a track started and send it to him and then he'll kind of come up with melody and send it back. But I often find, because you were saying that the tracks that you do that when you do that yourself, you send it to Nadine, those mm. tracks are often complete. Do you find that you're writing kind of verses and choruses and stuff like that, and then sending it to her, or is it just a one groove and one chord, and then, then it, it, it really varies. It really does vary. Sometimes yeah. it's, I mean, something like um, 
Out the Way, for instance, I wrote the music for that um, was pretty much done, and the structure was done, and the structure was really random. And yeah. you, know, I, I mean, you know that song, obviously, and the, yeah. and the, and the, all, the all the sections are different lengths. And that, yeah. was just, that was just what the lengths that it happened to be. And Nadine really yeah. liked the stuff I sent her. So she yeah. she wrote to the lengths that were there. <laughs> so all, yeah. the, all, the, all the, the fact that all the section lengths are different was just me sort of giving options to her. But she liked them all, so she wrote over the whole thing. As oh, OK. That's interesting. Well, whereas whereas other things, other songs, I'm just trying to think of other options, where um, there's other tracks where I've sent her um, a whole... You know, it might just be a, a, a groove on one on one chord, which she had then written on, and and sort of su and her vocal melody will suggest some chord changes, which which I'll put in afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Or, right. Or okay. bit where I've sent her whole whole songs with different sections in, and she's only and, and only one of the sections has worked for her. So. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. So it it really is. It's very var it, It's very variable. Um, yeah. And and it's and it's it's funny because some of the tracks do end up almost exactly the same as the first thing you do and the other ones end up miles away from where you started yeah. but um yeah so um yeah um, a lot more so on this on the new record actually we've we've taken stuff and really really reinvented it so yes yeah. um yeah so yeah this is um, the fourth I, mm. just the fourth album you've done together yeah the new one yeah the fourth the fourth album so has this been the, the process all the way through all those four albums? Or no, it, um, it was. It kind of was the process. The very, the very first time we met and worked together, I went round. I think it was around her brother's house, actually, or her house. I can't remember. It was uh, um, where she was staying in North London, and um, and uh, and we just sort of met and wrote a track together. Where oh, I can't remember exactly how it came about, but it was sort of like. I was just playing some. She had a, a basic idea on the piano, I think, and um, and then I played a, th a thing on the guitar to go with it. And we didn't have a drum kit there, so it's sort of. But there was a snare drum, and um, and it became a track called "Aching Bones," which was sort of the first single yeah. of the album. Yeah. And that and and we wrote that um, in a day, and that really didn't change very much after that. We re-recorded yeah. it, but the. The original demo was almost exactly the same as the recording. So, um, right. Um, but a lot of the, f about half of the first album was stuff that she was already playing with her. She'd already, she'd already been doing quite a lot with her and, um, and the piano and been gigging with just her and the piano. And it was something right. that we, we, do, we discussed it a lot at the beginning. It's just something that she wanted to move on from. She didn't want to be a sort of like singer, songwriter y girl on the piano. So there was quite a few of those at the time as well. And it was right. sort of, um, so we, and I, and I really wasn't a confident writer at all. I hadn't really written, I certainly wouldn't have put myself down as someone. I, I'd done a bit of writing, but I'd never written a whole song sort of on my own or all the right. music on my own before. So, right, so okay. um, I was just like, okay, well, I'll give it a go. And, and, and yeah. so we kind of learnt it together, really, the process. Right, okay. Um, so you built the sound, you developed the sound together. Yeah. Uh, sort of, yeah, for most of this kind of thing. It's interesting, isn't it? That was, that was my next question was going to be because obviously this is a relatively recent phase of your career mm. having done a lot of production and engineering for, for many years before that yeah so i was going to ask if, if that's always been if, if if this kind of developing material has always been there but it sounds like it hasn't been more but it, it sort of is you always you have to um you you always you're always trying to um uh I mean, through just through this, sorry, this isn't a very cohesive answer. Uh, just, <laughs> just, Come out with it. Uh, um, <laughs> um, I think through the process of producing something, you know, you quite often, depending on the on on the artist you're working with, that's quite often you end up having to write write stuff. But I yeah. never really considered it writing until I um, until I started writing with Nadine. So there would be sections which now I guess I could say I'd written in other people's songs yeah. but, it's not, but I think I, I think I think that's a very simplistic um, mm. idea of the nature of writing I think writing is um, is quite a lot to do with instigating the project um, yeah 
and setting up and having the ambition for the project. So the fact that maybe you get you, a producer will help you finish right in the middle eight. I don't know if that's if that's really uh, yeah. I, I would never have counted myself as a songwriter having put a couple of chords on somebody else in the middle eight. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but then production is is it's not you know it's as much about kind of orchestrating and arranging as it is about about plugging microphones in, isn't it? I mean, it's, yes. It's, whether you're physically sitting down with a piece of manuscript and writing a bass line out or not, Absolutely. you are still very much sort of contributing. And also, whether you've actually written the song or not, as the producer, you are kind of in charge of the vibe of the studio. So if you've created an atmosphere that's very creative, mm. which enables the bass player to part that awesome bass line, then you have oh, contributed yeah. to the writing indirectly. So it's, it's, yeah, it's so. all those kind of soft skills, isn't it, of production. It's yeah. not just about, you know, knowing which microphone to put over this drum. It's also all these other elements, these, these kind of less tangible elements. That are kind yeah, of it was a bit of a running joke with some production friends of mine, where we'd all had songs that were, uh, this is probably in the early 2000s, where we'd all had songs where the middle eight or, or a section of the song, which is basically something that we put together to make the song work. We hadn't written them vocals yeah. or the chords or anything like that, but, but yeah. sec a section of a song would then be picked up and used on an advert somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it was something that didn't exist before we worked with the band, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was sort of, uh, uh, it was, that was a bit of a riot joke that all this at the same point. <laughs> but then times have changed now as well, haven't they? And that, that, that people, I mean, it doesn't, not the way I, I work or mm. um, anyone I know works, but I know that a lot of people write pop music that they write in huge teams now don't they? so you know having yes. that middle eight that's written by that person out of 20 people yeah. is probably quite a normal thing now um, yeah yeah absolutely. Would be quite difficult to sort of quantify i was going to say we've yeah. got quite a few different people um joining us and if any of you've got right. questions please fire away someone said hello they and they want to hello. <laughs> not really a question but um, yeah. yeah so uh <laughs> if anyone's got any questions um, and if not, we'll just crack on. I was going to ask you about your um, production career before Nadine. Obviously, you've got um, the, the famous Blur Think Tank album. Yeah. Um, you've told me some stories about that before. Can you share them again? How, where was it? It was recorded somewhere unusual, wasn't it? I don't know. Were they rude or they? <laughs> there was one hilarious one about skinny dipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We were. Um, yeah, we did that. Well, that record we sort of did over a period of time, we did. Um, because Damon this was with Blur, right? With the Blur record, yeah. Everyone missed it, yeah. Yeah, Damon was quite busy with the first Gorillas record at the same time. Was that out, or, or was it Marley Music or something like that? It was around about the same time. And um, so we started it at Damon's studio in North, in um, West London. Um, yeah, he had a, a studio that was just like a sort of. Uh, it was like a room in an office block. <laughs> it was really bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> and you, and the yeah. neighbours. Neighbors used to complain about the about the noise, but it was a really cool studio. It had loads of toys in it. It was really good fun. Um, and I quite like working in studios that aren't very, aren't very. Uh, I don't really. I'm not that comfortable in the really big sort of poncy studios where, yeah. where they have lots of cappuccinos and things. Um, yeah. Um, so I, I like something that's a bit more sort of messy and creative. And um, and uh, and then we we did we went to Morocco for six weeks and 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 did a whole load of stuff out there, which was fantastic and then we came back and that was in sort of september time so we got back in sort of middle of october and ended up in um in devon on this farm in the middle and like about a mile away from the sea in devon middle of nowhere and, and so we'd gone from morocco it was really really hot and uh so september in morocco is beautiful and really hot and dry and we ended up in devon in september october which was so not october november which was like horizontal rain and freezing cold and, uh, and, and we and we sort of allowed ourselves to have one night out a week so um otherwise it would all get a bit out of hand so it was uh, like thursday night was our night out and the rule was you could do whatever you wanted on thursday nights as long as you came you know you start to work on friday and um and so the farm was about you know, like i said about a mile away from this sort of deserted beach in in um in devon and we worked and we for some reason we thought it'd be a really good idea on Friday mornings after your Thursday night out, we'd go skinny dipping in um, on the beach. So we'd all walk down through like that, through the sort of the wind and hail and whatever, whatever the weather was, and then all just dive in the sea because it just kills off your hangover straight away. Right, so, okay. Because your body goes into, I think your body just goes into sort of self-defense mode, and um, yes, thinks you're going to die. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so we did that. And then one day, I think I'd not been out. I hadn't joined in the Thursday night. But one week we did, um, we did it and we went down. And then there was sort of all blur and a couple of guys from the record label were all sort of dived into the, into the sea and there was like, you know, their clothes in a pile. And then over the hill, sort of hiking towards us was a group of six formers <laughs> walking over the hill and I was like uh guys um school school party like yeah yeah very funny like no no school party like, oh shit <laughs> all just <laughs> sprinting out of the water and <laughs> running around naked <laughs> yeah quite the thing so you're a, you're a, you're a school was it school was it girls or was it boys? Mixture. It was a mixture, yeah, yeah, a mixture of. So you're a, you're a sort of sixth former in the middle of nowhere in Devon, and you walk <laughs> over the hill and then you see Blur basically running out of the sea naked. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's gonna, you're going to remember that, aren't you? Yeah, you thought so. I think we we didn't hear anything about it, so maybe we got away with it. <laughs> you're lucky there wasn't Instagram in those days. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That would be a much more famous uh, experience, wouldn't it? We've got a question now here. Think Tank was such a mood to it. Was that something you formed and created during the process, or was it premeditated by the band? Um, it was. It emerged as we went on. Um, the record. It's an interesting record that one is it, it, because um, it was written as we went, uh, which is a, right. often get. Well, no, actually, increasingly records are made like that again now because people make mm. records themselves at home. Um, yeah, but nearly everything on that album was the sort of the first time it was played really um right a lot of it was jammed out by, and damon would come in with an idea for a song um and most of it would be sort of jammed out and then we'd edit it into into um a structure and make it a, a, into a more finished thing and then the, a lot of the process was trying to main so a lot of the process in finishing the songs, the difficult bits in finishing the songs, were was um, doing it without losing the initial atmosphere of the song that we loved, which had made us work on it and made us right, yeah, on, continue with it. So, and that and that's, I think that's often a very, very yeah hard thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, when um, you just knock something out, when you sing something into your phone, or you just play something into your phone, and it sounds yeah, it's really crappy and it's crap recording and stuff. So you think, okay, I'll replace that later, and then you can't replace it because. Everything no, exactly. sounds yeah. crap and compared to that one thing. You have to just put up with the. You think you end up sort of saying, "Well, okay, well, the, the loss of quality sort of makes up the the, the, the vibe makes up for the lack of quality." You know, if you use yeah, it. Yeah, but it is. It's, it's the same it's the same thing we were talking about earlier about musicians. It's the 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 attitude of it is, is yeah. vital, and and the 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 realization of it is 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 um if you get a you know it's great. There's a photography analogy, isn't there? That you can take a great photo. You can take a great photo on a on an iPhone, um, but you can take a really good quality great photo on a on a great camera. You know, <laughs> but the, being yeah. in the right place at the right time is yeah, the key. That's if yeah. you happen to be holding your Hasselblad rather than your than your iPhone, then you're in luck. So <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Feel, and recording is very much the same thing. I mean, and um, and I think with the there was a lot of stuff with the with that Blur record. Um, who was it who asked that question? That was Will, wasn't it, who asked that question? Um, was that Will White Noise? Yeah, hi Will. Um, Will makes great music, sounds really good. It's really, really good atmospheres in his music. It was, there, was, um, it, there, was a, there was an atmosphere that emerged to the music that um, was actually emerged before we went to Morocco. And, it was, um, and then it was, uh, it was really kind of, nailed down by the, the experience of being in Morocco and it was quite Damon was doing a lot of African he was doing he was really into them he'd just done Mali music so he was really into African music and the and Afro beat stuff and all that sort of thing and so that was a big influence um, mm. um, and also it was a it was a really odd time for the band because because Graham left the band at the right at the beginning of the record um, oh, right. so wow. it was a real it was a really weird scenario because um, they, you know, they, they had to decide whether or not they wanted to continue with him there or, or without him there. So, um, right. So he didn't yeah. find that record. He plays on on one song. Yeah, there was, he he did attend the 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 uh, a couple of sessions right at the beginning, um, mm. and um, and it just they just weren't, you know, 
the band just weren't getting on. Him and Damon just weren't getting on, and it was really. And he was going through a lot of shit at the time, a lot of a lot of struggles at the time. So it was, um, um, yeah. And um, I mean, I, I, I love Graham. I've done three. Done four, with him, haven't you? I don't know. I've done four. I think. With him. So uh, yeah. So um, yeah. Um, so it, uh, you know, he was, and and it wasn't. Graham not being on the record wasn't something that anyone would have wanted because yeah because he's Graham Coxon and he's awesome yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're gonna make a record and the and you have a choice of him on it or not then you always go for him on it yeah of course yeah yeah absolutely amazing um I was gonna ask you I want to ask you about the Depeche Mode albums as well um mm. so you were how many of those did you do two Three. I think you were doing one of those when I first met you, which was probably about twenty years ago. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Menlo Park thing. Yes. And you yeah, did, yeah. Yeah. And you were, you you lived, sort of went over and lived in California to do them, didn't you? For a bit. Yeah, I mean, we used to do. Um, they varied a little bit, but we generally try to do sort of because the band live on um, Martin Gore lives in California, and Dave Garn lives in New York, and. Fletch, Andy Fletcher lives in London um, and so we used to try and spread it out between the different locations so, they, so right. they've all got families and yeah so um, so they want to spend they want to spend as much time and they spend what, like 18 months on the road for each record so they want to spend yeah. as much time as they can at home yeah so, sure so what we used to do is like four weeks in each in each place so we do four weeks in california then four weeks in new york then four weeks in california and with a with a break in between each session so um right okay but it was always a bit of a it's 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 a logistical sort of juggernaut those records because you have yeah. um anything that involves lots, lots of synthesizers is always is, is always yeah. a lot more technical to set up um and uh and we would essentially build a studio with with lots of Martin's gear and my gear, um, and, um, and and we would go. We wouldn't usually work in the in the control room in a studio. We'd usually work in the live room and build our own because it was a bigger room. So we'd, yeah. we'd find studios where there was a big enough live room for us to build our own our, our own control room with all the synths, and then then we would all perform in there and. And, um, like you did at the pool originally. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, um, which, if anyone doesn't know, is a it's a studio in um in Bermondsey, which um Ben kind of started, which is an amazing room. A lot of amazing legendary albums have been recorded there now. Still, yeah. still going. It's, it's yeah. a great. Record. Yeah, yeah. It's a huge room. It's brilliant. It yes, used to always have the control room and the desk inside the room. They've changed it now. They've got an actual separate control room. But for years, the thing, the defining characteristic of that room was yeah, was being in there with the producer, which is great. As a musician, it's such a nice thing. Yeah, I love that. I love that arrangement because it's yeah. it, um because you're all you're all working together. Then it's sort of yeah. if 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 the band are on headphones, then the then the producer and the engineer are on headphones. So and, yeah. yeah, and you know what it's like working on on headphones. Most of the time, you spend you you know people are getting frustrated. Is is this a, an immense source of frustration? So it's people going, yeah. you know. Putting um, putting headphones on and then you're going right, play that and it's like why why aren't you playing in time? It's just like well I can't hear the drums. And nobody knows. Yeah. You know, whereas if you're all on headphones, everybody knows what everybody's hearing and you're all in the same boat. Yes. And it removes yeah. all the frustration. And if you're all in the same room, as soon as you finish playing, everyone takes their headphones off and talks. It's just like yeah. you know. So so it, and it's I find that vital. Is that's the interaction is very important. So um, yeah, yeah, I'd far rather have. I think you gain so much more from doing that than. The ability to EQ the bass drum whilst uh, somebody's playing. Well, drum. yeah, uh, it's just a studio is, is quite an odd um, situation. I've often always found a studio quite a difficult to perform in. I was talking to someone else about this recently. Having mm. my own studio is so nice because I can sort of noodle about for hours and sacrifice yeah. time as opposed to having to sort of perform at the time, which I can do. But um, so anything that can be done to kind of like reduce that feeling of like there's people behind the glass wall listening to my playing and judging me <laughs> anything that can break that down is going to be great you know yeah we've got another yeah. question here uh we've got this is a very basic question but can i ask how you started producing that's katie hi katie katie, katie tavini wonderful mastery engineer very good she she just mastered um nadine's record for us all oh, right did a great job thanks katie uh how did i start producing i um 
I was an engineer for um, a while, um, doing all sorts of various things. Um, and eventually um, managed to take, make the jump into, I'd, I'd produced a few tracks for people, you know, so like, you know, the sort of classic produce a few B-sides here and there and done this and that. And then um, somebody was, and then um, eventually I got the, the option to start producing some some uh, actual albums and be paid for them. <laughs> It was. It was quite. It was. It was engineer and engineer and engineer and keep working, and then eventually it would be. Um, I got. I made the jump into into producing albums. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask if you would show us around, if you if you wouldn't mind, um, sure. kind of flipping your flipping your camera, because I, I think people would love to see your your setup. Maybe just go outside and show us the, where you are. Yeah. Of, I'll just go where out. Where you are. Um, yeah. Um, Squinting into the daylight. Hold on. Let me work out. How the most, the most self-isolating of all studios. Now then, how do I flip the camera around? This should be fun. Is it that there one? Should be a. Don't oh, there you go. There you go. So there you go. I'm in a. I'm in the middle of a field. Uh, as you can see. In a farm. In a, in a farm, a working farm. So that's a field down there. That's the other end of the field. That's the South Downs down there. Yeah, um, and then the studio's here. Um, I just if you step back a bit so we can see the building that you're entering now. Yeah, you rewind and walk backwards. My yeah, internet might drop out. Let's see how we go. So that's all right. It's, a, it's an enormous barn. Um, we've enormous got a library. Barn. We've got a, we've Which got a you built, right? Barn. You built the inside. We built the insides. Yeah. So the insides. Uh, we've got two control rooms here, uh, made out of straw, straw bales. So that's the wall. <laughs> That's how wide the wall is there between the two control rooms. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, in the control room, we have... Um, oh, you've got some amazing room. gear in here. Show us your gear. My control room. Yeah, right, get the gear out. So these these desks are um, 1970s. <laughs> yeah, got two, yeah. 1970s Studio 089s, which sound amazing. So they're sort of... They do. They're sort of contemporary with me. 1073 stuff, you know, things yeah. like that. Um, so uh, this, this is, we use one for mixing. That's my mixing desk. We use one for recording. That's my recording desk. Um, right, okay. We have a bunch of outboards down there and there yeah. and up there and down it's, there. Go around, show, us the synth, show us the synth that you're standing behind, that's behind you. If you turn around, you turn around behind you. Yeah. Right behind you. Show us that synth. Oh, it's not there anymore. No, it's oh, where's it gone? It's over here. Yeah. Well, this Super is a, rare synth. There it is. <laughs> there you go. There's the VCS3. Um, oh, man. That, uh, and this is the sort of synth collection here. Um, oh, talk show, show, us, show us some of these synths. What have you got there? Oh, six nines. I thought they were 08 nines, Dan. <laughs> Depends on who you ask. Um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, that's a synth collection. We do. We'll we'll have a play with that in a minute. Um, so uh, and there's an eight oh eight. Yeah, it's an eight oh eight. Far Feast Compact, there, which is probably my favourite synth in the world, organ in the world. My little piano, which sounds sounds lovely. Yeah, Lot, I, I pretty much all of pretty much all of Nadine's records. Uh, the piano on Nadine's records are all recorded on that one. Um, yeah. I, used to uh, I, used to, I wrote all my acoustic Maidenland albums on one of those. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, and then I've got you know. the Arp 2600 there, which Look we'll play that. with later. Uh, there's a bit of modular stuff which there. Which features on the Melty Stuff Down record, that Arp, doesn't it? It does, some, yeah. Some of, that, some of that guy on uh, It Is What It Is, I think. Yeah, and, the, and some of the VCS3 as well, there is. Yes. Um, got a space echo there. And the VCS3 is a great sort of distortion. You recorded me playing saxophone through it and used it as a sort of distortion yeah. thing, didn't you? Yeah, awesome. we can use use it for all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's a it's a great synth. It's um, yeah. it's it'll operate as a synth it's, if you've got about a week to set it up, and then um, and uh, and then it's uh, but it's also great for treating sounds and, and modifying sounds and vocoding and all sorts of crazy things. And then we've got sort of yeah. guitar yeah. pedals up here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Look at this collection of pedals here. Got got all the love tones. Love, there's there. love tones. Yeah. Um, love tones. I, this is where I did. I've just, I've just seen that question. This is where I did uh, David Smith's last record. Uh, 
you might recognize the uh, name of the piano there. Whoever knows that record there, which was played. Hey, there you go. That's that, one there, that one there that's just underneath the synth, that's just underneath the piano thing that you just pointed out. That's yeah. an amazing synth, the green one. That, we did some stuff on the, on it is what it is with that. Love yeah, that synth. The Poly 800, it's really, really good. Yeah, so yeah. it's quite amazing. Quite underrated that one. Just, uh, like, um, there's it's so good. It's got amazing yeah. sound. That. Yeah, and that one's got a little mod on it, so it's got a sort of filter and a modulator on it, which is quite good. Yeah. So um, yeah. Do you want to see the Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's someone on here who calls themselves Peter Wareham. They just sort of spelt my name in a different way. <laughs> I don't know who the hell. I don't know who that is. Not you, children. Please. It's not definitely not me. Um, they want and, and that person like me, so maybe yeah. this me without me knowing wants to see the live room okay i'll show you the live room they're going to yeah. walk us through the live room we'll take you so this is how we go to the live room um this is great and have you got have you got a drum booth in one of those containers as well haven't you oh uh, we did have yeah uh, surprisingly the farmer actually complained so it was too noisy because it's so loud uh, oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they've never complained about noise at all now i might lose hopefully my uh, internet connection will work usually these these doors are open it's nice and colorful in here but uh, Close the ceiling, point it upwards so we can see how tall it is. Yeah, there you go. Nice big room. And you've basically built this room again from just yeah. like a, an agricultural farm. Yeah, this is just a, a space. So we built this room and it's all sound it's sort of sound insulated panels and it's um Yeah. Um there's usually a drum kit there, but there's amps today, which is nice. Um And this is where we recorded all the all the drums, pretty much nearly all the drums and um and percussion for the Melt Yourself Down record. Um, yeah. Far, far yeah, a few. Um, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's, a good, it's a good room. We had all of you in here, didn't we? We had six people in here. So, um, which is... Yeah, we did. Um, really nice rooms. Yeah, it it's very good. nice to sort of step outside the room and just basically be on a farm as well. That's yeah. got a nice... Um, We've got our little mic shelves there. All the mics are in the other room. Aren't we? So, it's big as well. Um, and the other things as well, which is quite mind-blowing is the fact that um <laughs> this isn't even all your stuff is it because you've got a lot no. of stuff still at the pool <laughs> yeah well all the all the equipment at the pool um pretty much is mine apart from the desk nowadays so uh, we've just put yeah. a new, uh um yeah we just put a new <laughs> i like that question <laughs> hold on how do i do that button the pool is where they recorded um adele's 21 record yeah. Um, they put loads of stuff in there. The Killers. What else did they record in there? Some classic records Florence, in there. Florence and the Machine. For, Florence and the Machine. Um, Arctic Monkeys been through. Uh, Nick Cave been through. All sorts of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. We've just we've just put a new desk in there. So so we did a, did a deal with a very nice chap who's gone who had a Neve a Neve desk which has gone in there. So which is great. Um, nice. But all my, um, yeah, all my outboard and my, a lot of my outboard and all my mics, uh, and there's more drum kits. And so I, I wanted to put a studio together up there that had, I'd worked in a few studios in America where there was, um, um, a lot of, a lot of English studios in the sort of 80s, 90s, noughties were, um, were, um, Oh, yeah, Kush is asking, asking for diesel math. I'll show you diesel math in a minute, Kush. He read my mind, because oh. I was about to ask you about diesel math yeah. as well. I feel you now, John. Yeah, the, the, yeah, a lot of the studios, 80, uh, 80s onwards, were sort of, they like big, posh studios, like townhouses. So they were very technical installations, and they had, you know, they were very sort of nicely put together and stuff, but they didn't have anything musical going on. So you went in, and right. they didn't... So, at the best, there would be a piano, or, a, or possibly a, a Hammond organ, which you probably have, yeah. to pay, probably have to pay to use, um, pay <laughs> to use it. And, 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 um, and then I, when I first started working in America, a lot of the studios in America were set up by, because they were all set up, all the London studios were all set up by record labels, usually. Right. And a lot of the American studios that I worked in were all set up by sort of enthusiasts, like musicians or people who were just really into studios. And I mean, they still had the record company studios, but it was because it was cheaper to get space over there, people could set up their own studio easily. So they, yeah. So nearly every studio I worked at in America was just had this amazing sort of esoteric collection of equipment that you know some of it some of it worked and most of it was just like good fun and um and it yeah. was sort of, and the idea was that with the 
with the pool was to set up a studio where you could walk in and then you'd have all these cool instruments and you could just play them. You know, so there'd be like yeah. whole synths and cool drums and guitars and, yeah. and stuff like that. So you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't be um, sort of stuck for inspiration or, you know, yeah. um, trying to make the music more important than the EQing. Anyway, Diesel Mouth. Yeah, we've got some Diesel Mouth. Diesel Mouth over here. Diesel Mouth isn't plugged in at the moment. I don't know, I'll see if so, my Wi Fi will get to Diesel Mouth. But that black. So on the, um... On it is what it is. The, the note itself down tune is what is it is, which is our second single. There's a bit in the middle. We kind of have a sort of quite spacious, well, relatively spacious for us, um, middle eight. And there's a bit where Kush is kind of singing with this kind of like impossible reverb, um, which could ne could never be a plug-in. And it's not. It's this. It's this. <laughs> it's about what is it? About two, about uh, a meter and a half long, and about metre and a half high, yeah, two metres long, metre and a half high. It's a big, it's an old diesel tank. Um, and it's still, <laughs> when, when Kush was singing into it, there was still quite a lot of diesel left in it. <laughs> 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 Hence the name Diesel Mouth. <laughs> yeah, he's saying it's a sexy box with a strong yeah. smell. Yeah. Sexy box with a strong smell, there you go. Some, some, some <laughs> <that>. <laughs> well, there you go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right well um have we got any other questions before we uh move it along because you got high on the smell of diesel Roz, Roz, our manager we, we're both managed by the same person and earlier on quite a long time earlier on she asked she asked um if we've got any gimlets if i got any gimlets yeah, yeah no, she said where are the gimlets yeah i know this we're, we're um rather what, sensibly what is a gimlet a gimlet, oh, it's a wonderful drink. A gimlet is uh, equal parts vodka and lime cordial, and then lots of crushed ice. That sounds very good. Yeah, it's part. It's um, it's um, party juice. Yes. In fact, there was a gimlet night that I missed, wasn't there? You had a gimlet night on tour yeah. one time. Yeah, they're yeah. Always, yeah, they're always quite dangerous gimlet nights. Yeah. Now we've got a question here from Tom Tom Greaterex, which says, "Which which sessions were the most testing, suede or fat less?" <laughs> I saw that one. Um, they were both pretty. Who is Fat Les? Fat Les was a was a sort of football based um, super group set up by Alex James and um, that uh, what's his name? That actor who was in who was in the uh, yeah um, yeah. Never mind. Um, Lily, uh, the comedian guy, Keith guys. Allen, Lily Allen's dad. Keith Allen, yeah, 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 yeah. and um, yeah. Yeah, they were both. Probably the suede session was more grueling. <laughs> I did. Which couple, album did you do? I was. I did a. I worked on a couple of records as a sort of programmer and as an engineer. So um, right. I did. Um, uh, I worked on coming up. Um, I did a couple of weeks programming the drums on that um, a long time ago, and then I then I did. Um, quite a lot of engineering on one after that called uh, Head Music. Yeah, oh, uh, Head Music, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. I tried to get it. Some agricultural, something agricultural going on out yeah, there. Yeah, there's a lar large truck just drove past. A large truck full of grain just drove past. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do some, we're going to attempt some music. We had a bit of a, um, a, a rehearsal this afternoon and um, we found that we are one very slow beat apart. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're gonna <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna play I mean what we don't know is whether the people watching will hear us a beat apart. So we can just we just yeah, if we can know. just clap. So if we yeah. just if I count to four we'll just try and clap yeah. on one and we'll see where we are. Okay, three, yeah. four. <laughs> I was so to me <laughs> <laughs> you're a whole you're a, a kind of slow beat out with me we're relatively probably your end relatively right. close was I, I don't know what the audience was I late behind in... oh right yeah, yeah. I was probably ahead of you here yeah yeah so um, so, um I don't know we're going to have to play something that doesn't involve any rhythm yeah well let's I've got a thing and let's see what what happens um okay yeah my, one thing I'm... um I must I must add is that um it's it's five forty five and so at six o'clock we're gonna be cut off. So if we suddenly if we do suddenly get cut off, we're gonna cut back on <laughs> and, uh, and try and 
try and rekindle this uh, this party we're having. Yeah. So oh, what, uh, oh, someone's uh, just arrived. It's a dog. Oh, it's Bob. Hi, Bob. This is Bob. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> oh, good. Right. All good. Yeah, how yeah, are you doing? Good. You're you're um, yeah. you're yeah. live yeah. on Instagram. We call you Babish outside, and I'll sort it. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. There you go. Bob's our uh, our uh, in charge. He runs the farm here. He's um very friendly and helpful. Yeah, he's a legend. <laughs> he's legend. Yeah, agricultural yeah. legend. We've yet to get him singing on anything, but it won't be long. Will it, oh. Is he, oh, he's gone. He's run off. <laughs> 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 I think that might be his uh, his his TV debut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably is. Probably is a TV debut, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to get him on something, man. You're going to have to get him on some, some, oh, something. Definitely. definitely. Solo track. Get him. Get him uh... You should record him talking and then make it. Because it's probably quite. You probably get some melody out of his voice if you record him talking about yeah. something. You could, you could yeah. transcribe it and write a song to it. If you get him talking about tractors, it's very melodic. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Tractors or, um, or um, perceived wrongdoings to uh, farm labourers. That's also that's that, that would be a more angry track, right? Okay, so those are the sort of the most melodic subjects, of... <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what gets his um, that's what what sort of raises his interest, so yes, yeah. and his voice by the sound of it, yeah, yeah. Someone says, so you, you state masses because I love a tractor, as you know, yeah. yeah, he does. He's got a very nice tractor, actually, a very nice vintage tractor, yeah. Vintage tractor. I'm going to put you up here. You want to go up there? If you don't get too. Uh... I don't know where we go. Yeah, there you go. So if I, if I put you up there, then hopefully you won't get too. Can't see you anymore. Be nice to be able to see what you're doing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I just, I'm just going to hold on. I've just got to set the computer. Uh, to... I think if you get the people to see, if you're going to do some quite. Um, Quite cool synthy stuff. It'd be good to be able to see you do it. Yeah. Well, this you should be able to see the um, the arc. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. You can just yes, we can see that. Um, and then I think you uh, can probably point it a bit more towards it. Maybe. Oh, because yeah, you're going to see the other ones too. Cool. Yeah, actually, I'll do that. But there you go. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to adjust my thing as well because I'm. Gonna... Make it all fall down in the middle of doing this. Let's see. See if you can actually hear it. If I do this, you should hear something. You got yeah, that? I can hear that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, know until we start playing. Maybe a little bit louder. Um, this might might be a bit of a racket. But we're going <laughs> to we're going to try it anyway. I'm certainly planning on making a racket. Yeah, cool. That's good. Right, I'm just going to sit back and drop it. Can't really get everything in at once. I'm also going to be fiddling around. I'm also going to fiddle around with that. Sounds good, that. I'm going to fiddle around with that as well. Which is. A. Uh... Tape, I think. Right, I'm going to adjust this a bit more. So I'm just going to do some stuff with my effects things. So that's going to be good. Try this. <laughs> I reckon if you can get a bit more level out of that, it'd be good to be able to be a bit louder. Okay. Let me see what I can do. Do what I can do. Do This is um. This is one of Cush's amps here. Can you see these amps behind me? See these amps here? Nice. These are, Cush lent me these, these are Russian, Russian amps. And they tested them by throwing them out of a window. Tested them for what? Their ability to fly? <laughs> the ability to not get destroyed when hitting the ground from a great height. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Three minutes is going to cut off, and we're going to come back. So, if we suddenly go, hold on, and we'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. I don't know if anyone's watching now. We might have lost everybody. I did warn you, though, that this isn't going to happen. I'm just trying to unplug my... and sort my uh, phone out, which is... Uh, I've got one person. I've got Glumband. Hello. Um, I'm just trying to plug my phone in as well. Hopefully Ben Hilly is coming back any minute now uh, to join us. I might just... Live video back on. Uh, we've got a few people there. Hello. Um, <laughs> uh, it all had to end abruptly and then I couldn't figure out how to get it back because the, the button wouldn't work and I was basically jabbing my finger at my phone screen trying to get it to work. Um, so we're going to wait for Ben. I might just, I might, I fancy doing some more playing so I might just, play. anyway. oh there, there we go. I might just play some stuff. Oh here we are, Ben, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Right, there we go, there we go. Go, play, go. Come on. My screen stopped working for some reason. View. View. Go. Okay. We're just waiting for Ben now. He should be with us any moment. Thanks everyone for coming back. Um, feels like... Oh, here he is. Hello. Hello. Well, I, think we, I think we... Um, oh, I've gone up to... I'm trying to... <laughs> I I'm like trying to... Down. <laughs> I can't... My phone, annoyingly, is running out of battery, so I, I can't sort of stick it on the stand. But that was fun. How was that for you? It's good. I was just about getting, uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of wrestling it to the ground a bit by the time. Could you actually hear me? It was quite I weird. You, these, yeah. these, these, um, these headphone things I've got are really bad. So um, I was kind of hearing an amazing synth through a pair of, pair of shitty, shitty <laughs> earphones. It wasn't the best. Sounds amazing in here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it sounded like to anybody else, but, uh, yeah. Um, well, well must, uh, the only comment we got was from Ross. The only comment we got was from our manager, Ross, who said weirdos. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just trying to put my phone going. back. I'm trying to think of a microphone on this, uh, on this guitar. Maybe it'll be... Uh, no, that's not going to work. You might be able to see something a bit more interesting than. Hello. Wow, that's really high up. Good, isn't it? Cool. Do you want to do, play something else? Yeah. Um, should we get? Should we start where we left off? Yeah. You you, you go for a bit, and I'll and I'll join in. You might need to be a bit louder than that.
Well, it's a few bits. It's the Arc 2600 right there, which I absolutely love. Um, yeah, one synthesizer and its sequencer there, which is um, okay. a really creative. So I've got I've programmed a bunch of notes in here, and then it steps through them in a sort of fairly random. Well, you can do it in a random order there, or in a sequential order, and it will. Yeah. <laughs> You'll either clock through, or you can do it with a step, and then, um, and then the other thing was the uh, the chorus echo, which you can effectively play as an instrument if you have it set up like that, because you can yeah you can get feedback and uh, yeah and then, yeah that's what I'm doing do. with the memory man as well like, yeah um, yeah but that's a tape that's a tape isn't it that. Yes, that's tape, and then there's. Um... Do you say it's a chorus echo or a space echo? That one's a chorus echo. Yeah. Oh right, okay, because it's got the because chorus echoes are often orange, aren't they? And that one's green. Like yeah, there's yeah. different there's different um, uh, eras of them, and that's the this is a three oh one. There's the green. There's another one, the same same one called the uh, which is a sort of classic tape echo, which is a two oh one, which is uh, doesn't have the chorus on it, um, and it doesn't have yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't have quite so much stuff on it. But, and then, uh, then that, the uh, the Cynthia yes. Zero Oscillator, which is, sounds amazing. Yes. And that's yeah. Just that. Yeah. That's a great sound. But that's big. You didn't, you, huh? You didn't use the CVC in the end. Did you use the CVC? The CVC? Um, I was using the, oh no, the VCS3. No, I didn't. Sorry, the VCS3. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I knew it had, had a C in it and a V. There you go. <laughs> and well, a number. I, I was going, yeah, V's and C's. Um, I was going to use it, but it's, uh, um, I was having enough fun with the uh, art. Yeah. So. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wicked, so. man. Yeah, nice. Cool. So what are you working on now? What's next? What's, what's, what's happening in isolation? How are you dealing with it? Um, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm being hugely un, uh, unproductive with, um, well, just because, you know, uh, homeschooling. <laughs> Christ. Yeah. So, yeah, so we've been doing a lot of homeschooling, which is, um, so yeah. tough of time and, you know, the, and kids, as you, as you know, kids are quite spooked by the whole the whole thing so um, yeah 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 it took Iggy a while to he was he wasn't sleeping for a while because he was too worried about us getting coronavirus and dying yeah yeah um, absolutely he's sort of yeah. reassuring that we wouldn't because we were self-isolating so that's not gonna happen yeah no not, yeah, it's, yeah. it's scary for kids so um yeah but, um, it's gradually settling into a different sort of um different sort of routine you know so uh, we're getting, yeah so you're doing loads of stuff that you sort of have always been wanting to do and never got been had the time to get around to, like musical stuff, I mean. Um, I don't want to know about the painting of the shed. Yeah, I'm listening. Nice well, yeah, although I do. <laughs> uh, uh, not as... uh, Ros L says, talk about the live gig plan from the farm. Oh, yeah, the live gig plan from the farm. Yeah, we're going to do, we have, uh, we're going to set up, because we are where we are, we're so isolated here. Let me show you where we are on the map. Um, <laughs> yeah, you've shown us where we are, and well, I mean, I can talk. To, I can I can say a bit about what we're thinking of doing with Note Yourself Down, but of course, we, we don't know yet if we were, if we're ever going to see each other in the flesh again. But if if in the you know event that we do, um, we're planning to come down and uh, and record uh, you know broadcasts and performances from your live room, um, which is awesome because um, that would be really good fun. Yeah, well, the idea um, is yeah. we're going to do because we're there's a there's a picture of where we are on the map, as you can see, that's yeah. the farm from above. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just surrounded by fields. There's nothing here. Yeah, so yeah, it's perfect, perfect place to be isolated. 
So yeah. The other thing is, when we come out of lockdown and we get, you know, and people, we can get more than one person here at a time or one, two people here at a time, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do some gigs from the live room, set up in the live room. Yeah. The, and the great thing is we can make it sound really good so we can yeah. record it as a live session um, rather than doing it on our phones. You know, we'll work out a way of doing it so it actually sounds nice. Um, well, that's what I've been trying to work that, that out recently because at some point it has to go through a phone, though. If you're going to do it on Instagram Live, actually Facebook yeah. Live, you can do it via a computer. Yeah. But well, I don't know yeah. if you need the, if you can have the audio would work, but that's one thing you can do. But then I suppose you could probably plug an external camera in and in, and an in, in external uh, interface into an audio, into a laptop, and then do it on Facebook. Yeah. I think if you have the right, the right stuff, you can plug a, a camera and a and a an audio input through Instagram, through whatever. So instead of the phone, um, but um, but you can get an audio interface that plugs into your phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you so can that, get multiple microphones that way with Phantom and stuff like that. But I, I I've just bought and it hasn't arrived yet. I've just bought a, a Shure. It's called an MV88, which is like a a, a a mic specifically for this purpose, which works oh, with right. a camera stand and all that stuff. Apparently, it's really really good. So that'll be good for portable stuff. But I was thinking yeah. it's a little bit better better when I'm here. Because if this jamming thing is like, because if that's the only way we're going to get to play together, <laughs> well, the, the most frustrating thing is the is the the delay, isn't it? Because it's it, it the, you can do um, abstract sort of yeah. spectrous stuff like like yeah. we did, but um, but it's very very hard to react to anybody else when you can't yeah. play in time, and it's sort of. Um, um, you know, you, there was a little sense of, of sort of performing together there, but it's yeah. only a sense, isn't it? It's, it's, it's great to do yeah. this. And, and until, we can, until we can find a way of playing in time. I was actually thinking yes. that they would just phone each other up on landlines. <laughs> landlines are in time. <laughs> and then sort of... Oh, yeah. Oh, there goes my phone. Um, yeah. yeah, but then the audience, but then the people watching wouldn't be able to hear it. Hey, Juanita. Um, yeah, well, that, then we'd have to do. You have to also broad, broadcast from the through the sound through the uh, audio interface as well. So you'd have to listen. So the musicians would have to listen on the phone, and then the then the recorded sound would go out. So the musicians get the crap sound rather than people hearing it. Well, always. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but I don't know. Maybe there is a way of doing it. I'm sure somebody somewhere knows how to do that. Um, yeah, there's got to be there's got to be something. I, I, I've um, I'm sort of scouring the internet daily for sort of solutions to this. Yeah, I mean, I you know. do remember. I think I think um, Digi Design tried to do something like that once. But I think the problem is is that the inter your the buffering on your internet connection is constantly changing, so you can't. Yeah. So you can't just have can't it set it. To one thing. No. So um, it's um, unless you do like hardwire Ethernet, unless you have put Ethernet. Like plugged mm. into your phone somehow. Oh no, but that still has to go through the broadband router. So it's the broadband router that your internet comes. Yeah, from. but at least if you cut the Wi-Fi out, it might just help a little bit. I suppose it probably wouldn't make that much difference, really. But yeah. Yeah. That's always going to be the problem. People keep joining. I was just about to sort of say that I'm probably going to go <laughs> in a minute. My phone's about to run out of battery. Yeah, I just saw one. Yeah, mine is as well. Yeah. But um, look, it's been brilliant to hang out with you and to have a little jam, even if it was quite um. An unusual, experimental in every sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that. I thought that was good. Yeah, I, 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 I regularly I spend many a late night doing the washing up, listening to uh, Late Junction, and having yes. that sort of stuff coming out the radio. All in preparation for this, clearly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. It's all been training. It's all been leading to this moment. <laughs> well, yeah. It's really so good. Look, see this is lovely to see you too, and. Um, Jay Batesy, YZ, is saying it's over already. Um, we've been talking for about an hour and a half now, so yeah. um, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. But it's all going to be available on um, uh, Miss Juanita Stein's Keep Going. <laughs> Keep my, going. My phone's going to run out of battery, Juanita. Ben's, Ben's phone's going to run out of battery. But you can watch it all back <laughs> on... Um... Oh, it's James Bates. James Bates. Is it James Bates? Jay Bates. You can, all, you can watch it all back on our, our Instagram page. Um, and uh, on next week we've got quite a few people lined up. We've got Dan Carey, um, Quake, um, Mika, Mika Levi, nice. um, Rosie Plain, and also an amazing uh, director who wrote King Gary um, and Murder and Successful um, called um, James Defrond. So we're all going to have fun with that next week. And uh, 
Thanks so much, Ben. Cheers. And I'll see you soon. Cheers, Hopefully Pete. I'll see you in the flesh much. before too long. Absolutely. I'll speak yeah. to you later. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.